This video is in no way a how-to, it is a how-I, and it gives you an idea of what is possible to do with templates by not following the rules. Hey guys, and welcome back, my name is James, and today you join me in my cave where I do all my work. Uh, this is a very different style of video because I want to try something a bit more interactive with you guys on camera direct and show you how uh, I work here without doing the voiceover. Uh, hopefully get videos out uh, bit faster because the usual type of video I make is a bit slow to make um, but anyway today's project is going to be making shoes for a one-year-old baby uh, now it is a big baby uh, he's a big boy let's just say that like that and uh, so these shoes may seem a bit bigger than usual for a one-year-old kid but uh, yeah just don't worry too much about that this is a pattern I got from Etsy which I, th I think is really cool it's very simple, very nice, and it makes for some good-looking shoes. And to do that, I've got two things. First of all, I've got this really nice dark green, olive green goat skin here, uh, which has got some nice suede on the inside, which would be very, very comfortable, as well as being somewhat, uh, somewhat resistant on the outside. For the sole, I'm going with this Italian vegetable tanned leather, which is a scrap that I've got left over. I wouldn't usually use something like this for a sole, because it's slightly higher quality than you might want for a sole. Um, but it's got a nice feel, it's not too thick, which should be very nice for the kid to be able to feel and walk around in. Uh, I will probably, I will definitely try adding some rubber toppy soles at the bottom just to make sure he doesn't slip around because at that age you start to crawl around and start to walk and you don't want your kids slipping around all the place and I do have I have made a pair a few pairs beforehand for my own daughter and uh, yeah she's been slipping around these way too much which is why I think the uh, the toppy bottom sole is necessary don't worry though I'll make sure that the brown of this vegetable tanned leather is clearly visible and as you can already tell it's going to make for a really, really nice color combination. So uh, hopefully the camera angle isn't too bad for you. I'm going to show you as I go. And uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoy the build. I'm using a modified Openel knife here, which is a high steel carbon Openel knife, which uh, it's a razor blade. OK, it's a $12 knife, but uh, with a few modifications, it's uh, a really nice leather working knife because I've basically made it into a straight blade here. I'm just going to make sure it's nice and nice and razor sharp before you start cutting, always. I have my template cut out. Now all of these will have to be done twice, of course. Uh, two shoes, two feet for most people. Uh, bear in mind that you may want to, at least for, I, I think these two pieces, the upper and the back piece, are absolutely symmet symmetrical, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but for this one, because you want a left and a right foot, make sure you flip it over uh, when you're drawing out your second pattern. So let's go ahead and get this done. While you're at it, make sure you mark out any marks that might be on the pattern. For example, here you've got the front mark and the back mark, which will come in hand later when you start stitching just to line things up. So make sure you, you just mark those out on the leather as you do this. So as mentioned, once you've done one side, make sure you flip it over to do the other side, just to make sure you're getting the symmetrical parts here. I always like to try and use up as, well, have as few scraps as possible when I'm cutting things. So. Yeah, if you can, try and maximize the amount of space you've got on your piece of leather. I mean, leather is basically an animal that you have to sacrifice to get. So just keep that in mind. I think it's important to remember where it comes from and treat the, the, the material accordingly and uh, use it with respect to what it actually was. Just leave it at that. This goat skin is actually a bit of a bender, bendy material compared to regular vegetable tanned leather, or at least uh, cow vegetable tanned leather. It's not as easy as others to mark. I'm using this very fine point, like all here, 
pricking all um, just to mark out my outline but if you had a white pen you could definitely use that but this is going to be a bit harder to see when it comes to cutting but hopefully should still be visible enough and I'm going to just do this part first before doing the uh, this part simply because I want to check if I can indeed see my cut marks with this and cut this material appropriately before I go ahead and start marking everything. This is not cutting through at all the way I was hoping. Uh, this material is really much more flexible than I'd imagined. Uh, yeah, you can see just how flexible that is. And it's making cutting into it quite complicated. Uh, I may have to switch to a rounded blade to have more cutting surface. Um, and for that, I'm going to use a scalpel with a rounded blade. So let's see if this does the trick. Oh yeah, much, much, much cleaner cut. Which, yeah, it's a scalpel. You expect a clean cut, you, hope, you pray for a clean cut. Okay, so that cuts through nicely. Now you have to be careful in corners, well always actually have to be careful. As I mentioned this is very flexible material and it's not cutting very easily. I am going to do one thing to help myself ease up my work is use a rotary cutter just to crush around the outline here. Now this does create a tiny bit more waste cutting out around the outline first. But it enables me to get my piece out of the way and to make sure I have a clean surface on which to work. I'll keep that close by and carry on working on cutting this one out. I can barely see that line here. There we go, one piece cut out. It's not perfect, but it doesn't really need to be, and you'll see why. Um, short story, or long story short, I'll be turning the edges inwards, so you really don't need it to be ab absolutely precise on this cut. That's number one. It does work. Um, it's not amazing. I wish I had something else to mark my leather with, but uh, hey, it works, so we're going to go ahead and steam on. Now for supple leathers, uh, as I just mentioned, you'd want something which has a rounded blade um, to get more cutting, more slashing surface, basically. And that really helps for something that's a bit more bendy, a bit more stretchy. But if you can, and I couldn't on the previous pieces because they were slightly more finicky, if you can use a uh, one of these rotary blades. Now this is la creme de la creme in terms of just cutting through leather, especially thin pieces like this. If you've got some straight lines, it's brilliant. Uh, if you've got curved lines, it works very well as well, as long as you take your time. It just, it just gives you gorgeous, gorgeous, nice cuts. It's really easy to use, hard to go wrong. Just take your time and you should be golden. Hoppla. Yeah, see how fast that was compared to using the scalpel? Now again, I had to use the scalpel on these because of these corners here. A bit too hard to get to with this. But whenever possible, this is my go-to tool simply because it's so fast and easy to use. There we go. One done, rinse, repeat. There we go guys, you have all your pieces and they are ready to be assembled. Now for this build, I'm not going to be doing anything else because this is 
Not the kind of leather that easily uh, takes a burnish, but I would be using vegetable tanned leather and therefore prepping the edges and burnishing them in this build. Well, we're gonna have to just pass on that. But if you are using a different type of leather, then at this point, go ahead and burnish all the edges. What I want to do now is mark out where my different holes will be for my rivets. So for my, what are they called? Eyelets, eyelets. And these will be my lacing eyelets for later. But you still want to mark them out now, punch them out and install them. Because if you don't do it now, it's going to be a pain to do later, if not practically impossible by the time you've stitched everything up. Now to install my rivets, I'm using a very nice, basically a chunk of wood. It's used to be a piece of track, I believe. And it just makes a very nice sturdy support upon which I can hammer along without disturbing the neighbors too much. Um, I always seem to disturb them a bit more than they'd like, but well, that's just part of being part of neighbors, really. Oh, I don't know, whatever. Anyhow, as uh, one of my favorite people would say, it's hammer time! Yeah, if you get the reference, honestly guys, congrats. So, installing rivets is pretty simple. You want a one of these, not rivets, sorry, eyelets, and one of those. I don't know if you can see that, it's ridiculously small. And the idea is that you punch them two together and it looks fabulous. So let's go ahead and install the first one. So this is the uh, outside, obviously. And you want to place that onto the support. If you can grab, ah, if you can grab it, put the little ring on top like that. There we go. You should have seen that. Put this on, and basically it's going to open up the uh, tube part like. Like a flower? That's a bit ugly. But yeah, you get the idea. It opens it out, pushes it outwards, and the other side looks... It's okay. Once you've got laces in there, it'll look fine. And to be honest, take it out, taking it out and starting in now is going to be such a hassle. I'm not very good at this, guys, to be really honest. Um, this is relatively new to me, and I'm not using the most sophisticated tools to do this, which means that the precision I get is not incredible. But again, I'm not blaming the tools. This is totally up to me being relatively new to adding eyelets and not really understanding how much pressure I need and stuff like that. Well, there isn't a single one that I don't like. But hey, you know what guys? It'll be fine once you get laces in. Okay guys, we are done with this part. This next part is going to be very simple. It's tracing out where I want my stitch lines and then punching them through. I'm using the same base here to do the straight tracing and punching. I'd prefer something flatter to the tracing, but because I'll be using this for the punching, I'm just going to keep the whole thing set up here. I'm using uh, just a simple divider here at three millimeter spacing. It's a spacing that I really like for most of my builds. I find it works well. Um, feel free to copy what's on the pattern or what's indicated in the pattern or just do whatever you feel is right. And for me, that's three millimeter spacing. Do the same on all pieces where you have to stitch. So this includes the back pass. Now oh, this is going to be really complicated. I need a flat surface for this because this leather is moving around all over the place, stretching like mad. So flat surface should be easier to do. Very gently. Not perfect, but hey, you know what? It works. I can see my lines. 
This leather is a challenge to use, challenge and a half. It's great, great, gorgeous coloured looking leather, but it's really stretchy and bendy and makes it really complicated to work. But as it's for a child's shoe, I think uh, I think you want something a bit stretchy and bendy and just comfortable, really. Hopefully it won't be too stretchy. Anyhow, his parents will tell me. Now, since this is going to be all folded over on itself for the stitching, I'm going to just very slightly skive off all the edges here. So a few different tools I like to use for skiving. Um, I'm just going to test the first one out to see how it feels. I'm not used to skiving very supple leather like this, so I don't know how this is going to go, but I'm going to be using this knife that I made, um, which again is very nice high carbon steel. Um, so hopefully this, this will do a good job out of it, but because this the um, leather is so stretchy, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see how this goes. Again, I like to use a good strop, um, or just any real strop, but it's important to keep your tools sharp, it just makes the, your life much, much easier. It doesn't take long to keep them sharp, if you keep them sharp. If you let a blade go dull, then this part can always take much, much longer. So let's go ahead and see if I can do this properly. <laughs> Already encountering difficulties. I don't really need to take much off, just a bit to make that edge more comfortable once it's turned over. Yeah, this may take a bit of time, but it should make a big difference in terms of comfort and appearance at the end once the edges are turned. Hmm, I could probably take off more than that. Okay, so this is working quite well. It's not the best, um, but I'll give us another sharpen and keep on trying. Okay guys, I've managed to skive all the pieces. Again, don't worry if it's not perfect. Damn, still got one to do. Sorry guys, back in a sec. Okay, as I was saying, don't worry if it's not perfect. Um, but yeah, if you guys have access to a Bell Skiver, which is a very expensive skiving machine, instead of doing it by hand, it's going to take you 30 seconds versus five minutes. So definitely recommend if you have access to one, go for that. If not, as you can see, perfectly doable. Now, let's prick some holes. If you can still see it, try and follow your stitching line that you traced and start at the center mark of your piece that you previously traced as well. Again, this kind of uh, material is going to be a bit awkward to work with to f because the uh, it's really hard to see your holes, your stitching holes, once they're in there. But uh, yeah, you can t you can still see them. I'm using crimson hides pricking irons, which are the Japanese style. I believe they're the Japanese style pricking irons and I'm using them in four millimeter spacing. And yeah, I'm sure there are faster ways of doing this. This is my way. If you have a faster way, I'd love to hear about it. I'd love to learn. Now the more fun part of actually doing the same for the soles, which uh, is actually more fun because it's slightly less stretchy, but it's much less stretchy. 
and is easier to use basically it's easy to to do this again make sure you get the old holes nice and straight because this way you're fixing lots of mistakes and also this is one of those areas where you don't want to get your holes all lopsided so just take your time lining them all up again this is one part that will give you will change around at least this is a part that will influence the final shape a lot if not the most important part in getting the final shape you want so just take your time making sure that all your holes are straight I mentioned you didn't, have, you didn't have to worry about back stitching or double stitching and the reason for that is very simple so once you've finished putting on your back piece you can then go ahead and put on your front piece or the upper um, well, it's, I believe the whole thing is the upper but for convenience I'm going to call this the upper uh, once you've done the back piece the upper comes on and will be stitched over the first few stitches of the back piece which means that your threads on the back piece can just be sticking out like that and you'll be gluing them inwards anyway afterwards so you really don't have to worry about back stitching double stitching or whatever you may do to solidify the ends here which I would normally recommend on any normal build so as you can see the back is now on and uh, yeah the leather is very 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 supple we'll see if we do something about that later um, it feels very nice but I am worried it might lack stiffness we'll see when it's all built and we'll see how it feels if I want to try and do something about that but for now let's carry on building it as you can see uh, this has to come on but so far I am really enjoying this color combination with the brown insole yeah let's carry on stitching again boring part so it's gonna speed up it's very tedious actually uh, having to find the stitching holes in this olive green color and then going through really tedious work at times and can be very very slow Okay guys, so we've basically done one out of the two. As you can see, it is folded in on itself uh, all around the corners and that makes it a very nice, elegant look. Now, uh, disclaimer, I am not by any stretch of the imagination a cobbler or even a shoemaker, nothing of that sort. I have no training, I'm just enjoying life. If you want to follow a, a real cobbler, I would definitely recommend Brian the Bootmaker uh, up on Royal Club on YouTube as well as Bido's Leatherwork or Potter and Sons uh, and those three channels I think will give you more than the entertainment you're looking for but in the meantime I'm just someone who's playing around with leather and uh, we're having fun here so slight disclaimer the reason I'm saying that is because as I just showed you I did I did it my own way and the pattern would say that you're supposed to stitch the whole thing inside out uh, with the stitches on the outside it's a very simple pattern and that way you can get a nice glue up and you can get a nice fit up and then turn it inside out uh, to get the top grain on the outside the reason I don't like that is because I work a lot with vegetable tanned leather and I find that that creases a lot so that's why I did it my way which means that this video is in no way a how-to it is a how I and uh, hopefully you've enjoyed so far and it gives you an idea of what is possible to do with templates by not following the rules. Um, anyhow, just want to get that out of the way. Right now I've got one out of the two shoes stitched up. I am going to stitch the corners here which are a bit floppy right now and then take care of the underside. As you can see I've left the, uh, the, the threads uh, hanging loose but that's fine. Uh, you'll, we'll be sticking something here anyway and we can stick the threads down at that point. So I'm not worried about that. Next step is to stitch up here to make it look like a real shoe. So yeah, let's get going.
So I've got this Toppy uh, stuff. It really is the, the official Toppy sole rubbery thing. It's the thin version. It's not very thick and that should be absolutely perfect for this. That's the idea at least. So I'm just going to cut out a bit and uh, yeah, see how we do. It's the first time I'm using this. First time I'm actually adding anything like this rubberized to the bottom of a shoe, any project I've made at least. Um, so I, I really don't know how this is going to go. So wish me luck guys. I'm <laughs> First of all this is so hard to cut compared to leather. Okay, there we go. Just go at it brute force. for now. Now the idea is very, very simple. This is already roughed up, which is nice. This is already roughed up. I am going to give it another very quick hit with some 80 grit sandpaper, if or not. Whatever was on that sandpaper, it looks like it's... Uh... Actually, I get the feeling it was already more rough to start off with than my sandpaper is actually getting it. So, I don't know, maybe next time I'll just try leaving it like this, as is. Okay, and next step is to go ahead and use, use some contact cement. Uh, this is some uh, heavy stuff. and hit the bottom. As you can see, I can use this as opportunity to get my uh, threads all nicely glued down. So you should be doing it inwards out, but because of those threads you saw I was trying to do it uh, differently. Let's move that out of the way for now. This is when you really would love to have a some kind of wooden shape for your shoe to fit in, like the real cobblers basically. I've given these plenty of time to dry and uh, they should be yeah, basically just a bit tacky to the touch, but uh, that's about it. Now the idea being that once I've applied both of these together with some pressure, uh, they should never ever come apart. Now, there are some things to note here. First of all, if I had a shape that would go, a wooden shape that would go inside here, I'd be able to much, I'd be able to apply pressure much, much better onto these, but I don't. So I'm just gonna do it by hand as best I can and hopefully uh, the result will be good enough. I've got some glue on the uppers here, which is not good. I'll have to try and take this off afterwards. Um, Never done this before, have no idea how it's going to work. It, theoretically it works, <laughs> but this is an experiment, so here goes absolutely nothing. Let's make sure we line this up. Okay, and off we go. I'm just using my fingers right now to press all this down. I'll see if I can go in there afterwards with pliers or something to get those corners, those edges really, really tight. But already, it's looking like it's working quite well. Pressing inside of my fingers really hard. Again, I, if possible, I'd love to be able to go in here with a hammer and uh, hammer all this down, get rid of all the air bubbles that might be in there still. Um, that would make sure I get a really perfect fit, but we can't have everything, and uh, I don't have what it needs, what I need, what it takes to do this. So, just doing it by hand. Usually works for most people. It has usually worked for me so far in the past, and it seems like it's working okay now. I'm going to trim uh, the 
access. This is hard stuff. That's really tough stuff to go through. But yeah, 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 rotary tools, they're magic. I swear, rotary tools are just some form of dark magic. There we go. Done. More or less. And there we go. Kid's got a toppy sole. As you can see, the toppy sole is pretty much the same thickness as the leather sole. Hopefully that's uh, in focus enough for you guys. Right now, I'm just going in with some pliers all around, press down the edges, making sure that the contact on the edges is as good as possible before letting it dry. I wish I, would, I had the right tools for this with proper um, flat-nosed pliers, whatever they call them, because uh, it is leaving marks in the leather and I don't like it. But you know what, guys? At this point, I just have to get it done. It doesn't matter if it's not perfect. That will look more than sufficiently good once it's ready, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. Okay, I wonder if I can start trimming it now. Be careful not to cut my fingers, though. Yeah, hey, this isn't bad. Okay, so I can actually do this now. And yeah, using a sharp knife makes all the difference. As you can see, this is actually a proper um, knife for a cobbler's knife. And it's made specifically for this kind of use where you go in and trim off excess. I have to be careful not to cut myself though, because this is a very sharp knife. And it's... Uh, Sliding through here quite nicely, but when you go through it suddenly jerks forwards, and that's uh, not very reassuring. Don't do this guys, let the pros do it. We'll let the idiots on YouTube show you how it's not supposed to be done. My father-in-law gave me this knife, knife a long time ago, and it's actually the first time I'm using it the way it's supposed to be used. And it's really, really nice. It's just the right tool for the job. So yeah, that's ugly as anything, but uh, you know what? Let's have a quick look at what it might look like. This is this is when I say I'll just see and end up doing the whole thing. This is going to be slow. I don't have a belt sander. And I don't have the right tools, so it's all just hand sanding from now on. And I have to be careful not to hit the uppers also. Eh, I might just have to do a rough pass on this and be done with it, to be honest. Okay, it's actually getting there. Slowly though. Anyhow guys, I'm not going to bore you with this. I'm going to try and do it off camera and uh, show you the result. Okay guys, pretty satisfied with uh, where I am on this right now. The edges aren't perfect, but they're close enough. And to be honest, that's all I need right now. I don't need perfect for this build. I need close enough. Again, it's a one-year-old kid. He won't know the difference. His parents won't. Uh, know if I've spent an extra hour or two clearing up the edges. To be honest, they're hopefully going to enjoy it as is, so I'm not too worried about that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use this edge beveler here. It's just basically rounding out the edges of the leather on top. And then I can go ahead and dye those edges brown again and give them a very quick burnish using some uh, token oil is the word I was looking for just to burnish these edges, just to make them a bit more resistant to wear and tear. And uh, I'm already noticing that the marks left from the pliers that I used to press down all around have already disappeared. So not too worried about that in the end. Uh, it seems to have all sorted itself out. I'm using some pre-mixed dye with alcohol, diluted in alcohol, which I use All around the edges here being very careful not to hit the goat skin 
green goat skin on the upper. Yeah, this is going to take another few minutes just to get around here without hitting the upper. Already, guys, I can tell you that I'm very pleased with the way the toppy um, rubber sole is sticking to my uh, piece of leather here, the inside sole, basically. It's not uh, the most elegant construction in terms of shoemaking, but I think it will really do its job quite well. The idea behind it all being that babies uh, or young children really don't want to have that much foam and stuff between them and the ground. It's really important for their brain development that they can feel as much as possible on the ground and it helps them get to become more stable faster, um, theoretically at least. So I think having just a simple plain sole and toppy outer sole could actually work really well. Anyhow, we'll know in time whether or not these worked as intended. Token all, my new best friend for this kind of thing. Again, try not to get any on the uppers. I don't think we'll do much on the uppers to be honest, but I just don't want to test what it does, if it does anything. There you have it guys. Uh, overall I'm really pleased with the results to be honest. Uh, we still have to see the second one finished of course and see what they look like with laces on. They're far from perfect but wow they're much better than I necessarily expected they could be. Whew, that's a long sentence. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna get this finished up. I might give it a coat of uh, wax just to make it a bit more impervious to any spills and stuff like that and uh, I'll definitely finish the other one and we'll get back, I'll catch you back later with both of these done for a final little word about the whole process. Guys, it's been a really fun little build. We are now done with this project. I've given them a good coat of Pat Deluxe by Sophia and uh, the, the idea here is that it's a kid who's going to be walking around and I want to make sure these are protected against splashes and rain and everything. So they are pretty waxy compared to what I would like them to be, but it's going to help protect the piece or the shoes for a very long time, hopefully. And uh, yeah, so they may look a bit pasty at uh, areas and different areas, but that's totally fine. And I prefer that than having a shoe that's going to be ruined the very first time it gets hit by a drop of water or saliva or milk or whatever the kid's going to be doing and throwing around. Uh, overall, really happy with the build. Uh, here's a closer look for you guys so you can see how it turned out. Uh, the leather on the uppers is really, really soft. And it does mean that the shoe doesn't have a good shape necessary to it unless you pull it around and hold it in a certain direction. Um, but it's going to be a very, very comfortable shoe that can be easily slipped on and off and that hopefully he's going to be able to wear for a very long time. He is a big kid, but these shoes hopefully will be uh, more than sufficient uh, for him for the next few months. Now, you'll notice that I didn't stitch all the way down here simply because uh, the pattern and generally you'd want to do this. You would want to stitch all the way down here before putting the uppers to the sole. But because of my stitching method, I needed to have access to the inside of this. Um, and so had I done that, it would have been very complicated for me to actually stitch it all together. Also, it means that I would have had to match the number of holes precisely, which is again something that I wasn't confident about doing, which is why I went for this general construction method. If you're doing it the proper way, you'd be stitching the uppers uh, together and gluing the whole thing upside down or inside out to the sole. Uh, in a way that you can just stitch all the way around and then turn everything inside out, which is technically easier, but uh, you do find that there are there can be some weird shapes if you've not done it perfectly, and if your leather doesn't like being stretched and pushed and pulled, then the inside out turning of that leather will leave marks. Finally, I'd like to point out that I am very happy with my little toppy experiment here. Uh, these have worked really, really nicely. And uh, yeah, sure, I could sand the edges more, I could get it even better looking, but 
overall, I think that is pretty neat for a toddler's shoe. And it does mean that you have a very uh, sturdy base well, for a kid. It, it doesn't cushion much, which I think might be better. I've heard of quite a few people tell me about, uh, including a podologist, if, podologist? I think so. Um, including a podologist who told me specifically that kids love to be barefoot. The reason for that is that they need to be able to feel the ground and that really helps them develop their sense of balance and learn to walk faster. So hopefully this method here with a very thin sole made out of leather uh, with a nice toppy undersole will work the best. Guys, thanks a lot for following me during this build. This has been an experiment for me, this kind of video, uh, the setup and just talking live to the camera. So I would love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments if this is the kind of type of content that you enjoy, uh, because hopefully this will make it easier for me to, you know, build the video and bring out videos faster. Or if you prefer the more constructed, straight to the point, narrated builds, which uh, I also find a much cleaner look. But uh, hey, this is much more down to earth. This way you get to see really how I work and I get to share with you my thought process in real time. So whatever happens, if I do more of these videos or not, well, I've had fun doing it. It was a fun experiment. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you're new to the channel, thanks a ton for watching till the end. That's really, really cool to see you guys here. Uh, please do consider subscribing. That helps me out a lot. And if you're not new to the channel, well, welcome back and stay tuned because we've got lots more coming. So thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you very soon for some more Leathercraft.